what's going on guys and welcome back so today we're going to talk about some hyper aggro decks and if you're interested i will link it once it's done and ready um, i'm actually working on a huge guide to hyper aggro and i'm going to cover all six of these decks much more in depth and that will be available through the link when available um, again not sure exactly when it'll be not right away so if you're watching this as soon as it's posted ignore it come back bookmark it i don't know something like that if you're watching this tomorrow it might be ready anyway so hyper aggro what are my top five hyper aggro decks links down below for all six of these because this is my honorable mention um so i think green steel is actually in kind of a interesting spot as far as hyper aggro goes um you obviously have your merfolk on one but then on turn two, not only do you have like Banzai and Flynn from Emerald, you have your Smee from Steel, which is just one of the best two drops in the entire game. And then as you progress in, you also have things like Prince with Resist who quest for two. You have Robin Hood shift lines that you can do as early as turn three. And then you just have removal cards such as um, Baboom, Storm, Strength. Um, and then also the the other, the new song, um, where you play it and your opponent cannot you pick a, one of their characters and they can't challenge the next turn and you get to draw a card so i really really like that card as far as being able to draw a card and again slowing your opponent down because they cannot um can't even think they can't um, challenge wow just complete total brain fart there and that is the when will my life begin card again it's a new song from set five uh, we see it there as a three of so kind of why this deck works in a way and why it's in my honorable mentions not higher is again you have the aggressive nature of the green especially in the early game you have things like the pegasus shift line to give all your other cards like merfolk smees band's eyes evasive for an entire turn which kind of is a keto like effect from amber where you get a whole turn unless they have a way to do mass damage um, elsewhere but it helps protect you from challenging so that's why we have the pegasus shift line uh the new green robin hood also if your opponent has damaged characters from trying to take out your characters well he gains extra lore then for each damaged character so it works out nice there and then just the other robin hood is just such a good card he finds his way in here you could absolutely forego him and this deck becomes a very budget option if you take those three cards out so another thing that i find very nice with this deck is not only do you have like kit cloud kicker on turn three to slow your opponent's tempo you have a multi-questing prince who is a bodyguard on turn three and in addition to that you can also play ursula so when you come back on turn four you can double sing mother knows best you can double sing storm rage on which not only removes your opponent's board presence it also draws you more cards similar strength of the raging fire you're spamming out a lot of low cost characters so turn three you play ursula turn four you double sing that strength after you play like two or three more characters because you have the ink and they're low cost it feels pretty good and then again the new song from steel you can sing it especially with ursula you get to draw two cards and two of their characters cannot challenge next turn it applies a ton of pressure while also giving you extra resources so let's officially get into my top five which deck is number five purple steel a big thing i love about purple steel is you can build this deck for like 60 bucks it's one of the best if not the best well i can't say that because one of these other decks is also a sub 100 dollars deck it is one of the best super budget decks and what i consider super budget is a hunt under a hundred dollars so in competitive card games if you can spend less than a hundred dollars that's great that's golden that's perfect um i will also have a breakdown of my best um budget decks coming up and we're going to work on that and i actually thought about doing a big video on a bunch of different jafar decks like obviously using the purple jafar but like uh, Jafar wheel green Jafar blue Jafar is a thing and see what we can't come up with with other colors even potentially so that's just a little look into the future so purple steel why is this my number five well we see a lot of common faces here we still have Kita bodyguard on turn two Smee we've mentioned being one of the best um, steel cards and just two drops in the game period on three and then we have the prince on th sorry on two we have prince on three who again quest for two has resist one three defense and outside of a fox 
there's not many early threats that can deal with him then the other cards we're playing we're not doing the song package because we don't have ursula there to potentially double sing it we don't really have a way to benefit additionally from this steel songs we do have two smash in there because it can deal with threats it can take out your opponent's characters a lot of characters three damage does wonders for so we got that couple smash in there to help prolong your board presence's life and then we have the life song once again because drawing cards and slowing your opponent's tempo down is always going to be a good thing i think any steel aggro deck should absolutely have her in here so what cards didn't make it it's pretty much the baboom we upgraded to smash we took out the robin hood and again the steel song package comes down a little bit lower so that's really the only differences in the steel package and then we get to the amethyst package which if you're an aggro player amethyst is one of those colors that well you're probably pretty fluent with you have the multi-questing maleficent on one you have chernabog and broom on one who also can help you draw and get into better cards into your deck as the game progresses we have bodyguards so snake isn't as impactful but snake in here because you can not only bounce your one drop to play it and then you can play it again later and re-ready it so that way you're not just sitting vulnerable. Snake can bounce your goat and it can bounce your smee even as well when it has two damage and then you can play the smee again back if you have enough ink that same turn even potentially. So I do like snake in this build because of that smee interaction in addition to everything else that it already provides in most other decks with cutting the storm rage on and some other uninkables we have room for pinocchio star attraction so questing for three on turn two is just an incredibly good card it's really fast it deals a lot of pressure to your opponent and they have to answer it um arthur i had uninkable room so on two cards i'm like you know what let's go throw arthur in there you can get the five lore bounce goat play where you play goat get one lore quest with arthur get one lore use his ability bounce the goat get two more lore and then goat's ability triggers again for that fifth lore or you can just use him with say pinocchio quest get three arthur quest get one bounce pinocchio get two more for six total play to pay two ink to replay pinocchio and now he's in a readied state so your opponent has to have a other form of removal they can't just challenge into him Dolores is a great card on turn four because it nets you a draw if you have an exerted character and she quests for two and she's inkable so that's why we play her over the rabbit. Goat for game just feels good. Uh, then we have Befuddle in there as another way to help slow your opponent's tempo down being able to bounce a two cost or lower character. Remember it does hit items too as well otherwise just ink it if you need to. Gathering wisdom and knowledge getting two lore great way to close out the game not a whole lot else that it's there for. Friends on the other side, easily four of. Drawing cards is always going to be good. You sing it with your goat. You sing it with your Arthur if you have to. You sing it with your prince because sometimes you don't necessarily need the quest too. So you sing it, get the free advantage. That way, play more characters. Your bodyguard's now exerted. Boss is on a roll. This is a sneaky card that I think a hyper aggro is missing. Hyper aggro should play this card. Why? You get to look at the next five cards, put them in any order, and you gain a lore immediately. It's another way to gain a passive lore immediately. So we have seven of them with goat, not counting like bon bouncing goat shenanigans. Actually, ten because gathering wisdom and knowledge. And in addition to that, you look at five, and if you hit a gathering wisdom and knowledge in that top five, guess what? If you're trying to close out the game, you're getting one more lore. You put that at the top of your deck, boom. That's two more lore next turn, guaranteed. So it's a great way to dig, and it pairs up with Gathering Wisdom and Knowledge so well, and I'm surprised more Hyper Aggro decks haven't been on to this little nice synergistic combo. And then lastly, Library. I'm not necessarily huge on this card. I think it's pretty niche, but... The potential draw too from Chernabog, from Broom, especially if you start to get into that mid game where you do not want to be, is just too hard to pass up. In addition to that, you can move your Smee here so when you inevitably lose him, you at least get a draw and you get to keep some advantage from your cards. Moving on to number four. Number four is Lemon Lime Hyper Aggro. Uh, this is the deck that I built for my son. Uh, a little more practice and I think he could have won two of his five matches actually he did really well he did get his first match win in a set championship so I was pretty proud of him for that and he just learned a lot he's just got to get a little more practice in with the deck reps 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 why is this deck so crazy well there's only two color combinations that can have 12 one drops that quests for two and I guess technically 
any amber deck can if you have the songs to play for your harp. But harp's just not that good of a card, I don't think. Especially in hyper aggro, because you don't want to be playing a bunch of songs in hyper aggro. Anyway, lemon lime hyper aggro. Any amber hyper aggro deck, you're maxing out your daisies. And then I'm just trying to watch my uninkable count. And 12 on 1, while being very nice, felt like an easy place to cut some back. Um, I like the force from Merfolk where they either discard or find a different way to remove it. So I put, kept four of him and put in just the two Lilos. We have the Pegasus shift line that we already had seen in the other deck, the Banzai, the Flynn. Um, needing card draw though. So this deck, we needed some card draw. And that's where Hypnotic Deduction comes in because you get to draw three cards. And then you look at your whole hand, you put two on the top. So why is that? You're only getting one extra card and you're playing it. So you're not truly plussing, right? But you're plussing in the advantage of it. You're plussing because you have your hand, you draw three more cards, and say you have a Kita, say you have a You're Welcome. Cards that aren't going to be good this turn might not be good next turn. You put two cards back into the top of your deck, and then you know you're getting it back. So it's like, okay, I can use Kita in two turns. So I'm going to put that card first, and I don't need Rapunzel's Tower either. So we can put that in the deck. I'll ink it next turn. It's fine. And then you get those three new cards. It's a good way to draw three cards and put some of the fluff back in your deck. It's a great way to put cards that you can't use on turn two or three back in your deck because you can use it on turn four or five. So for that reason, I do really like Hypnotic Deduction in here because it just it, we're not backed up by the Amethyst draw or even some of the Steel draw that we were able to go for. As the game starts to close out, sometimes you're right at that very end and you're like, oh, I just got to roll the dice. I got to win. I got a quest. What can I do? Because he has a character. Well, you... You play, you're welcome. And yeah, it sinks when you give your opponent two free cards, but it gets the body off the board and it puts them on a, you better draw that card or I win. Because odds are, if you're using it on your opponent's character, you're already in a spot where if I quest, they challenge me, I lose. So saying, well, what if they draw into the card they need? True. But they already have what they need on the board if you're using this on them. So either you just accept that you lost or you roll the dice and hope they don't hit what they need, right? So to me, it makes a lot of sense. And if you have to, you can use it on yourself and draw a couple cards even. Hidden Ink Caster. This one, I wasn't entirely sure on, but it's a guaranteed draw, so that's good. And in addition to that, with our higher uninkable count, everything in your hand becomes inkable. So all of a sudden, you don't need that Baloo. You don't need that Banzai. Like, you just need to play something or you need to ink or you only have uninkable cards right you play this and all of a sudden your uninkable cards become inkable not that you necessarily want to ink any of them because they're all really strong especially in hyper aggro but sometimes you need ink so this card just allows you to do that and it's a guaranteed draw at a minimum um, looking over the rest of the amber package so when we look at amber hyper aggro amber if we were to build as a solo color absolutely hyper aggro is the way I would go with it. Not only do you have your Daisy and your Lilo on turn one, you have Piglet on turn two, you have Wendy on turn two. We're not even playing Sleepy on turn two. Um, I do like Sleepy because the two attack is really good, but late game coming in exerted sucks. When you just need to close out the game, top deck a multi-quester, put it down. If it comes in exerted, you might as well have not even drawn it because they're just going to challenge and take it out anyway. But with the Amber Package, you also get a Bodyguard on turn 2 in Simba. And then turn 3 comes around, you have Donald, best Bodyguard in the game, by the way, being able to give something else a lore right away. And then, obviously, he's a Bodyguard, so I really, really like Donald. Maybe he's not the best Bodyguard in the game. That might be a little presumptuous, but he's very, very good. Baloo, another Bodyguard that when he's banished, you get two lore. So it applies a lot of pressure to your opponent. And keep in mind, this is something where had obviously my son seven he can't just like think as much ahead and whatnot but in testing when i was playing decks with baloo one thing to keep in mind if you need a couple lore you can take your baloo and challenge into something and die and get two lore it doesn't have to be on your opponent's turn it doesn't have to come from your opponent you can do it and it works out really nice Kita being able to give minus three to everything essentially gives you a entire turn to quest unless your opponent has a rush character in their hand and in which case they're taking out one of your characters big whoop you get pretty much an entire turn to quest and your opponent can't do anything about it julietta in here as 
healing, more for the card draw. Heal a couple damage off your bodyguards, prolong their life a little bit longer, and get a card draw. And then Rapunzel's Tower, I love this card. This card is crazy. Giving three extra defense to your characters, willpower, sorry. So it only costs one to move here. It has eight willpower on its own. So you don't play this on turn two unless you absolutely have to. You have no other cards to play. But like turn three, turn four, you throw it down, and all of a sudden you move like daisies here, and now daisies got seven willpower. They better have a brawl in their hand because seven is a lot. I mean, heck, you move a merfolk here, now it's got four. That might take two characters to take it out, which means two discards. You see where we're going with that? I really like Rapunzel's Tower in Amber Emerald, or sorry, Amber uh, Hyper Aggro decks. That leaves us with three. Which deck comes in at number three? I know that you probably know two of the combinations that are still out there. Do you know all three of them? Is this one of them? You probably still know two of them. We have two more after this. But is this one that you expected to see? So Kita's Hyper Aggro Special. What do we mean by that? Well, so here's some things we got going. The Steel Song Package, back in there. We got the Storms, we got the Strength, and we have the Life. We have the Prince, the Kita, and the Smee. Kind of like if we look back at that very first one, Kita, Smee, Prince, right? They're actually in the same spots. So that's neat. And then we got the same song lineup. We don't have the Robin Hoods or the Boobooms. I don't think we need them here. Instead, we do have the Whole New World. And why Whole New World? Why would you play Whole New World? Sometimes it's nice to get a whole new hand. Sometimes as you're pushing for game, you just need to be able to throw down more threats than your opponent can deal with. In addition to that, we're looking for some types of card draw, and we have other fun interactions. I like to have at least 12 one-drops. So when we look at the Amber package here, we have Cinderella. Why Cinderella? Well, she can go ahead and sing Storm and Strength and Life. So she can sing most of the songs that we play in the deck as a one drop. That's really good. You put her down, then on turn two, play another character, and she can start singing songs to deal with your opponent's boards, allowing you to develop and just get too far ahead that your opponent can't deal with it. Daisy, Lilo, again, not much to say there. And then the Queen. So Queen not only allows a uh, turn two whole new world, because that's what we're going for, right? Steal songs, yay. No, um, it's a multi-quester, and in addition to that, especially if you get like Kita, your shift, or not your shift, your bodyguard, or your Donald on board, right? Like you have a bodyguard on board that you don't necessarily want to quest with anyway, but you will if you have to. You quest with your queen, and you give that plus four to your Kita or your, to, to your Donald. Now they have six, and you take four away from your opponent's character. They probably have zero. Now all of a sudden, your bodyguards get to trade and not take any damage from your opponent, meaning your bodyguards still exert it, they have to deal with it, and all of a sudden you're questing for a bunch, they're losing cards, and they're struggling to keep up with you. Queen allows you to really take over and do a lot as far as the board presence goes. I really, really like this version of hyper aggro i think it's just missing a little bit of that consistency aspect however if this deck hits this deck hits it also can go ahead and take advantage of bodyguard kita a little bit better because now you have the shift kita line why would i want to shift i don't want to play her on turn three i don't have enough characters on turn three you're right you don't however you shift her on say turn five now you only spent three ink so you can also play more characters and get your board to go even wider you don't have to use the shift it's just an option that's there because you're playing both cards already most of the other cards were already kind of explained so i don't think i need to go too much more in depth with that number two amethyst emerald uh, one of my favorite color combinations in the game and i was really debating do i put this i almost i feel like two through four really are who is my fifth even fifth was two through five even like two through five i think honorable mention number six clear cut number one i think it's clear cut obviously you all know which one it is already but just in case you don't we're not going to say it yet i think one is clear cut the best and the next four i think you could interchange them almost at will like these next four are so close they all have little niche differences and what do you want from your deck but again here we got multiple um, one questers with your maleficent and your merfolk we have the pegasus shift line that we've already talked about giving evasive to all your other characters essentially a free turn like kita um broom in there as far as consistency and card draw goes one thing this deck does not have, though, is protection, is bodyguards. So 
that's where snake comes in snake is a great card to bounce your own character so that your opponent can't just challenge into it also we do have the things like kick cloud kicker to bounce your opponent's cards as well as mother knows best to try to mitigate the damage that way um, dolores in there as far as consistency goes we have the Banzai Flynn on turn two. So this deck also has a slow push into turn two, but you have eight multi-questers on one, six more on two, and there's options there if you want to play. By all means, there's Pua, there's the new Maleficent, there's Pinocchio. Um, you could play more Banzais. Like there's lots of options if you want to play more multi-questers on two. No, nothing wrong with that, absolutely. Um, but some other things that I like in this one is Befuddle. It's another way, kind of, since you don't have the bodyguards to protect your board to slow your opponent's tempo down. And I'm stuck. I think this card is actually kind of sleepier in Hyper Aggro because, well, for those who don't know, your you chosen character can't ready at the start of your opponent's next turn. So unlike Befuddle, it's not preemptive. They all already have to be exerted. But let's say they challenge into your board. We're into turns three and four, right? You're trying to develop, you're trying to keep going further, you play characters, and then you play I'm Stuck, and all of a sudden their character can't challenge because it can't ready. So now it's kind of like slowing their roll, but unlike Befuddle, it can hit anything without Ward, and not just a two-cost character. So I think I'm Stuck is actually kind of a sneaky card, and I don't play it in all the builds because I think when you have bodyguards, they kind of serve a similar purpose, like protecting your high questers. Uh, we just don't have bodyguards here, so... We are relying on Snake, on Kit, on Mother Knows Best, on I'm Stuck, I'm on Befuddle to be able to close out or slow our opponent down so that we can close out the game. Uh, gathering Strength and Knowledge, Friends, Bosses on a Roll. You're going to see these 10 cards in all my Amethyst Hyper Aggro decks. We already talked about Bosses on a Roll with the Gathering Wisdom and Knowledge. I think they just pair up really, really well. Um, I like Bosses on a Roll. Again, it's Hyper Aggro. You're trying to win fast. If you can sing it, even better. Um... Mother Knows Best, uh, You're Welcome, kind of a similar um, facet where you just put your op opponent on, you better draw the outer, I'm winning this game. So you play it, you bounce their card, or put their card back into their deck, uh, and you help protect your board. Otherwise, you can use it on yours once again to be able to draw two cards. You use this on Goat, you get a lore and draw two cards. So there's a lot of nice interactions going on here. Library, I don't like it as much as the Steel build. However, I do think it's still a pretty good card in here. Number one, one more deck. One deck to rule them all. Forged in the brain of whatever the heck is going on up here. Amber Amethyst. The first competitive deck that I ever played when I got into Lorcana. Actually back, oh shoot, almost a year ago now. Um, but yeah, Hyper Aggro, Amber Amethyst. These two things kind of go hand in hand. And we have 12 one drops that quest for two. That's really, really strong. Your Lilo, your Maleficent, your Daisy. Again, not going to sit here and talk about the same cards over and over and over because you kind of understand how they work now. Broom, also another card. So on turn one, we can play so many one drops here because you have so many that quest for two. You have the consistency of Broom. Uh, broom over Chernobog because like mid-game you can play the Broom, you can play a card, you can pop Broom, you can draw a card. You don't have to have it stick and last for an entire turn. And Cinderella here too. Cinderella getting some nice advantage because she can sing your friends. She can sing your bosses on a roll. These are cards that... Once again, she's a one drop and you can start gaining your advantage as early as turn two then because she starts singing them and you just put your opponent a little bit further behind a little bit faster. Piglet being able to take advantage of all the one drops. You play Piglet. Next turn you can come back with two one drops if you have to to get the three lore from your Piglet. Um, and then we got our bodyguard lineup, the Simba, Baloo, and um, Donald. There's not not anything real crazy here. I don't think Kida's needed in this deck either. Um, I just think the deck functions really well without her. It functions fast enough without her. We don't need to go for that scenario. Um, Dolores is in there. I like Dolores for draw power, like I said. Um, on play, if they have an exerted card, you get to draw a card. So over Rabbit because she quests for two, and she also is inkable, and over Maleficent because she quests for two. Kind of the reasoning there, I guess. Um, goat for four obviously and then we have our befuddles again we have the bodyguards so i'm not going with i'm stuck in this build um the knowledge and wisdom is a two of because i think that i mean to say amethyst has the consistency cards well they all have the same 
cards for amethyst, like amethyst green, purple green, purple steel. It doesn't change any of that. But the rest of the cards, I think, change it a little bit. Um, liking it at two, especially because we're already at 18 uninkables then, when you figure in your 12 one drops and then the four balloons. So putting in more going over 18, 18 is a lot already. Uh, you just got to be careful with your mulligans. Like when you got Daisy, Lilo, uh, Maleficent, if I only have one in my initial one, absolutely put it back. Don't even hold on to it because there's such a high chance of drawing into one. Um, also too, one thing you have to consider because the higher uninkables, sometimes you want to keep just one or two cards just as ink fodder even. And you're playing 12 one drops at quest for two. You can pretty safely assume you're going to mulligan into one. And just in case, keep your broom or your Cinderella as your ink fodder. Keep one of those other one drops as it. So that way, if you don't hit your Lilo, your Daisy, your Maleficent, you can just play that other one drop. And what if I need it for ink? Well, if you didn't hit those other one drops, you don't need it for ink. I'm just saying, those are your uninkable cards. Um, Amethyst Chromacon. So the only Amethyst deck I play Chromacon in. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of this card. I'm really not. Why am I playing it then? I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm playing it. I don't like the card. I really don't. Giving my opponent cards, not something I want to do. Especially in Hyper Aggro where it's, did you see your answer? No? Okay, I win the game. Well, why am I helping you see your answer? In addition to that, I have to take an entire turn off of playing characters to play this card. I, I get it. It gives you advantage. It helps you dig. And I don't know. I want to play around with the deck more because I want to take it out. I, I'm not big on the card. I don't think it's that great. I know everyone says you have to play it, you have to play it. But my personal experience, whenever playing against Hyper Aggro, if they have this card, those are the games I win. I'm just saying. Unless it's like a really random, weird, niche scenario where I'm playing Ruby Amethyst and I have zero characters until turn four to play, and I'm on the draw. On the draw versus Hyper Aggro, if you have no characters until turn four, you already lost the game. I don't care what deck you're playing. Um, but that's it. So this video actually went pretty long, but I guess we talked about six decks. I got an even longer version, though, where we break them down. Again, um, if you stuck around this long, that information will be linked down below once you kind of get our Metafy all taken care of and on the go. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for sticking it out. And until next time, like, share subscribe comment down below six decks four things I'm just saying you just you just watch six decks you can do four little things thanks for watching guys take care